Hey guys, how's it going? I'm back here with another video and today I decided to bring a tutorial for you guys on one of my favorite React.js libraries out there and I'm obviously talking about Chart.js. I've made a video on Chart.js in the past but that was two years ago. A lot has changed in the library and also I don't like that video specifically because also the quality of the video wasn't as good. I didn't have a mic back then. So I decided to make this improved version of a Chart.js tutorial where I'm going to be introducing the library, going over some common mistakes people usually make and common bugs that people usually find and uh, show you guys three examples with real data of uh, three different charts that we're going to make. The first one is going to be a line graph. The second one is going to be a bar chart and the last one is going to be a pie chart. I'm going to leave the data for all of them in the description in order for you guys to also test it out if you don't have the data with you right now. And yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Before we get into the video, if you guys could leave a like and subscribe, I would massively appreciate it. It will really help support my channel. I never ask you guys for for donations or anything like that. All I ask is for something that is free, which is to support me through the likes, because it does help push my videos to more people. A lot of you guys comment amazing things and that helps me as well. So with that in mind, let's get into the video. Okay, everyone, as you can see, we already have over here a React application. Um, it basically has nothing in it. I just ran create React app and I generated this very simple boilerplate application. Um, what I want to do is first show you guys how to install uh, the library and what exactly is chart.js. Well, in order to install first, well, in order to install first and foremost, uh, we're going to come over here to our terminal, I'm going to open this up. And what you want to install is two things. First of all, is the chart JS uh, default core library, which is a chart.js. I'm using yarn, but in your case, you can use npm as well. And the second one is since we're integrating this with react, I want to install react chart JS Two, uh, it is the implementation of uh, Chart.js for React, so it gives us uh, really nice UI components that we can just put into our project. Because Chart.js obviously works for any other framework, it works in the entire JavaScript ecosystem. So I'm gonna press Enter over here, and we're gonna start installing the packages. And as it's installing, I'm gonna just tell you guys what Chart.js is. Well, it is, in my opinion, the best chart library out there. If you're watching this video, you might already know what it is, and you might already know why you want to use it. But making charts is extremely difficult if you're not using a library to support you. Now there's good options out there, of course, but in my opinion, especially with the recent versions of chart.js, it became one of the easiest ones to implement. And it is widely supported by many developers, it has over like four or 5 million downloads every week. And the react version of it has like around two as well. So it is a pretty well maintained library, which is what you're looking for when you're installing this kind of packages inside of your project. If you opt to use a uh, non if you opt to use a, a chart library that has like 100 downloads a week that no one knows about, you might need to later on uh, remove that and migrate to something different because it might just stop being maintained. But with libraries such as chart.js, it is very big and very well maintained. Uh, I don't see that happening. So now that I gave you guys a quick brief explanation on what chart.js is and why I think uh, you should use it, let's start implementing the first type of graph we want. So so I want to create three components, actually, uh, just as an example for this video, I'm going to create here a components folder. And I want to create one for line, uh, one for uh, bar, and one for pi. And again, I'm going to leave all of this code in the description as well. So the first one is the line, right? And we want to export const uh, line graph equals to and we're going to create a very simple react component, right? Um, it's going to return uh, something saying line graph. Okay, and then I'm going to import this over here at the top. So import the line graph component from dot slash components slash line. And we'll just put line graph and put it over here. Line graph, just like this. Okay, so inside of this component to keep everything organized, I want to import some stuff from the library. First thing I want to import is uh, 
the kind of graph that we want to import. And this comes from the second library we we I showed you guys, which is the React implementation of Chart.js. It is the React Chart.js 2. Uh, and you can specify what kind of graph you want to display and grab the UI component referring to that type of graph by just putting it over here. For example, in my case, I want to make a line graph. So we're going to import the line component. Then I want to import uh, all of the individual parts of our graph that we might need from the chart JS library. So the first thing you need to import is the chart component and to maintain the patterns that the library recommends us to have. We also change the name of this component to chart GS for recognition. Um, so we're going to import chart GS like this. Then we need to import a couple of components that might be hard to understand why we're doing this, but they are necessary to make the connection between the chart GS core library and the react implementation of it. So we're going to import a bunch of uh, components from the chart.js library that refer to the different parts of our graph. So first of all, we're going to import the different types of scales. So the two that we're going to put here is the category scale, uh, and the linear scale, just like this, then we want to import the two types of elements, there is a point element and a line element, just like this. Then finally, we need some stuff to add some sauce to our graph, like a legend, a label, tooltips, all of that. So we're going to add those three things, we're going to come over here, we're going to import the a title, then a tooltip, and then a legend. Now, if you're unsure on what you need to import with this, I would highly recommend just looking at the different examples that they have uh, in the chart uh, documentation. I'm not telling you to go read the documentation and learn everything from there. I'm just saying that if you're implementing a bar graph, you can go to the bar graph example that they have there and just copy the different types of imports, because uh, I think that, that will just make your life a lot easier. Then what we need is we need to register this components and stuff that we imported from the chart.js library with uh, our chart. So the way we do this is we grab the chart.js thing that we import over here, and we say dot register. And we just put over here, all of the th elements that we imported from here. So we just copy all of this and paste it over here. If you don't do this, it's not going to display, uh, it's not going to render every uh, anything inside of your your website. So now we did all of the setup. Uh, we've set us basically imported everything we needed. And we registered all of them letting chart.js know that we're going to want to render those. Now, how do we display them in our website? Well, the easiest way to do that is to just use the line component, right? And the line component, similar to all of the other types of graphs and charts that you might want to have, it takes in two different arguments. One is options. And the other one is data. Now we're going to create two objects over here to represent the uh, two options that we we can pass. So the first one is going to be called options. And the second one is going to be called data. Just like this, if we uh, export this and actually put this over here, and this over here, you should see that it, it shouldn't error anymore. Oh, actually, the data will error because uh, we do have to put some data, but options can be left uh, empty if you want to, it's just to specify different configurations and changes that you might want to put um, to your graph. But for data, we need to convert the data that we have, and we want to display in the charts into a format that makes sense for chart JS. So they have a very specific format that we want to input our data inside. So the data that we have, uh, that I actually set up, I made some fake data. Uh, like I said, I'm going to put that in the description. But let's take a look at the kind of data that I made. Okay, so this is the fake data that I made for our line graph. It is very simple. Um, first of all, we want to display on the y axis, uh, the amount of steps that we took in a week. So every day of the week, uh, imagine I'm wanting to know how many steps I take per day, uh, I just set up a list and I calculated how many steps per day I take. And so on the y axis, we're going to have that and our y axis is going to be the data inside of our data set, as you can see over here. Now on the x axis is what's going to be represented by our labels. Now, since we're doing steps per day on a week, uh, our label will just be the days of the week. So if you were to picture this uh, into a graph, we would have the x axis being each day of the week, and the y axis would be how many steps we took 
per day. So the way we structure this in Chart.js is just like this, how I already made over here. It's an object that contains two things in its highest level, it contains the labels list and the data sets. Now, notice that it's data sets because you can actually put multiple lines um, in the same place. For example, I can have a, a line graph where I'm going to have the steps that I took and the steps that my girlfriend took, you know, I can have two different lines represented in the same graph. And I'm going to show you guys how to do it in a second. But we have labels and data sets. Labels, like I said, is uh, string values to represent or it can be numbers as well, however you want to describe them, they're going to be showing on the x axis. And data sets is a list. But for each line that we want to put in our graph, we have to define it this way. First of all, the label of what it is. So I'm going to put steps over here, because that's like, what we're representing with this data. And data is a list containing the y values uh, that should be respectively assigned to each of the labels. So you can see there are seven values over here, because there's seven values over here, each of them associating with the individual position on the other array. Now you can specify some cool things like border color, as you can see over here, I put this, but you can also put a background color, you can put anything you want, I'm going to show you guys some specifications as well. But the important thing is that we defined our data like this. Now, I'm going to come to the line.js thing over here. And I'm going to remove this and I'm actually just going to import uh, this uh, line chart data that I created over here, I'm going to put it directly here. Uh, line chart data, it already imported, as you can see. And hopefully, it says cannot import. Um, and now, uh, as you can see, it should show a graph. Uh, and it does, I'm gonna try to make it look good. Uh, obviously, we can scale this down, but it's showing the amount of steps I took per day of the week. Like I said, the y values is represented by the labels that we put there. And the x values are represented by the days of the week. And you can see, we are actually walking along more steps per day, as you can see. But you can also see that the label we put on this thing over here, this label, as you can see, it is represented right over here at the top. Now, how do we add another line? Well, I can just add another data set, which would be represented by, uh, let's change this to steps by Pedro. And this one will be steps by Pedro's girlfriend. And I'll change this, I'll make her walk, uh, start the same, but then go like five, eight, and then like 20. Th no, I'll put like 1200, uh, 11,000. And then I don't know, 15,000. And we'll save this and you should see that now we have two graphs, both of them having a different label. Now we want to maybe change the color, right? So how do I put the color for this, I can use RGB values like we're doing over here, I can use hexadecimal, I'll actually just put red, because I feel like it's easier to than to get the RGB value. But as you can see, we did separate the two lines, and they're looking pretty nice. So for now, let's just keep it like this, I'll do the other types of graphs, and then we can come back and talk a little bit more about customization, like making the colors look better, all of that. Um, but yeah, let's go into the bar chart. Okay, as you can see over here, I removed the line graph from it displayed, and I imported the bar chart component uh, that we created right now, it's obviously not showing anything. But we can use a lot of what we did with the line component uh, to do the same with the bar component. So I'm going to import literally all of this, and we're just going to change them. Uh, because that's what's good with uh, charge.js, everything is very straightforward and similar. So you don't have to spend like, a lot of time just like, uh, making everything different, depending on what kind of graph you want to make. So we're going to change this to bar, just like this. Uh, is it bar? Uh, yeah, it is bar. And um, we'll pretty much uh, keep all of this the same. The only thing we'll change is we don't need the line element anymore. We need the um, bar element just like this. And we don't need the point element as well. Uh, we're not using this. So let's just put it over here and remove the line element. So this is pretty much it uh, for registering the things we need for a bar chart. Uh, using the bar uh, component is just the same as using the line one, we just need the options. And 
the data. So I'm going to say options and data, just like this, and then close this options will be the exact same, at least for now, uh, just keep it empty, because we don't have any customizations to do. Uh, then data, we're going to import it from our fake data um, file. Okay, so for our bar graph, the data looks a little bit more uh, interesting, in my opinion, because uh, it's just a different way to represent it. So the example we have over here is we're going to have a couple of charts, a couple of bars, and the different labels we want to represent is the different expenses that we have uh, in our life, right? So we have rent, groceries, utilities, entertainment, transportation, all of those. And you just put them as the labels. Like I said, they're going to be the x uh, axis of your graph. So we're going to have a bar for each of those uh, labels representing the amount of money we spend in a month, probably uh, in that specific category. So it is good for this kind of data. Uh, we just put uh, the values like this. And then for the data sets, Again, we just put a label similar to the line one, and we just put the data uh, with an array where each value is the y axis corresponding to the uh, same position in the labels array. So we could actually use this data as a line graph as well, right? We can do the same thing, but I'm going to use this obviously as a bar graph. And there's specific things that I did over here. For example, I decided to uh, put the background color, as you can see. Um, and you can set it up. I actually had an array before because I was going to put multiple background columns, I was going to put a different color uh, for each individual bar. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that. But uh, for now, let's just keep it with one. And you can also specify the width of the uh, border uh, that you want to put in each specific bar. Now, how does it look? Well, I'm going to copy this, paste it over here, and just import this uh, from this and save it. Uh, it's saying that it was not found. Uh, are you sure it wasn't found? Oh, I'm not exporting it. I'm sorry. So I'm going to export this, save it. And as you can see, we have a beautifully made uh, bar graph. Now, like I said, right now, they all have this weird design, <laughs> because that's the color I chose. Uh, they have a kind of reddish color with a blue border. But we could technically add a separate color for each of the bars with their individual borders. And this is a good example of it. You just put uh, a, the corresponding color to the individual bar that you want. And you can set up just like this. I, I chose random colors, but I think it looks kind of nice. Uh, I also like the kind of opacity that we added uh, to the thing. The way we did it is by using RGB and setting the alpha value to a low one. But obviously, if I put this to like nine, you can see this more clear. Uh, but I just think it looks a little bit better when it's a little bit faded. But yeah, this is a beautifully made bar graph. Now let's get into the next one. Okay, so now for the pie chart, uh, I guess at this point, you already probably know how to do this on your own, but I'm going to explain it anyways. Um, it's very similar to the other ones. There's just some minor, uh, some minor differences. First of all, uh, what we import over here at the top, it's way less things because a pie chart is a little bit more simple than the other ones. So we do still import the tooltip and the legend from chart.js, but we also import an arc element, which is the element specific for a uh, pie charts. Now we have to register all of them over here, like we did for the other ones. And for the data, um, I came up with a really cool example, the way you structure pie chart data is by basically wanting to encompass uh, an idea, right? Uh, um, like a, a whole pie, right? And divide that pie into different parts. So in this example, I made is basically just calculating how much time you spent on different social medias, right? And you want to see which one you spent the most, or which one occupies the bigger uh, portion of your amount of time in a day that you spend using social media. So I have here uh, a couple different social medias, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, LinkedIn, and uh, they are the labels, meaning that they are different uh, portions of the pie. Now for the data set, we set up over here a label, which is just what the data is representing. And specifically over here, we put the amount in minutes that we spent on each social media. Now, the order again is crucial because it's what you associate uh, the individual labels. And I also wanted to put different colors because 
for this specifically for a pie chart, you need different colors. If you if you have all of them the same color, then you won't be able to know which one is which. So you have to definitely put different colors for this. And I also put a hover offset, which is a really cool feature. I'm going to show you guys uh, and I'm going to see if you guys can guess what this does. Uh, let's save this and actually export it. Um, and then over here in the pie chart, I'm going to put it and let's see. Uh, oh, I need to import it as well. Let's see how it looks. Uh, wait, what? Oh, this is still a bar. Yeah, I, I'm sorry. I, I copied from the previous component, so I didn't have to rewrite everything, which is what I think you guys should do as well. But if I change this to pi, this is how our pie chart looks like. Uh, I'm going to increase the alpha values on this one just because I feel like it's slightly not like it, you can't really see. So I'm going to put 0 0.9. Let's see how it looks. Yeah, this is pretty good. This is our pie chart. And the hover offset that I that we put is just that when I hover over one of them, you can see it changes the color a little bit like it adds a, a, a little offset to it. Wait, I'm going to zoom in so you guys can see. Oh, zooming in doesn't seem to work. But it adds a little like box shadow as well. It kind of hovers up, uh, which is really cool. But it is nicely represented uh, through the pie chart. Now that we went over the three different uh, types of charts, I want to talk a little bit about what you can do with this options object over here. Well, this is why we imported some of the plugins like title, tooltip and legend, because we can actually make this or customize the way we describe this thing. So for example, you see here we have daily steps, we obviously got that from our fake data, this thing over here on the first I'm obviously I'm back on the first example. But the thing is, I never specified that that's the title that I wanted, right? If I save this, like I never specified what this is. So if I want to change this, what we can do is we can come over here to our options. And first, we need to give a value for responsive. Uh, this will be equal to true to make this work. And then we need to specify what plugins we want to activate. So so for example, we want to change the legend of this graph. So I can say over here, the legend will have the following properties. An example of this is you can see over here, the legend is on top, right? But what if I want to put it at the bottom, so I can come over here and say, position, uh, bottom, and then you should see that now the legend is at the bottom, not at the top. Uh, other things we can do is alter the title, we can change its text to say something like, this is a graph about uh, representing my daily steps, you know, and then press enter and you can see, uh, wait, where's, <laughs> where's the title? Uh, let me put this one at the top again. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sorry. It's because if you would specify the title in your options, you also have to specify if you want to display it or not. So I'm going to say display true, and then press enter, and it's going to display. This is because um, it defaults to false. So you actually want to display it. But yeah, this is just a couple of things you can do with your options. And I can tell you guys, this library is really good at making components that are both uh, customizable, but also easy to use, which is something really hard to do with libraries nowadays. So I really appreciate charging us uh, for doing it like this. So yeah, that's that's pretty much what I wanted to do. Um, and it's pretty much the end of the video. If you enjoyed it, please leave a like down below and comment which you want to see next. Subscribe because I'm posting every week, I'm going to leave the code for this in the description. And I really like answering my comments, uh, especially if uh, there are questions. So if there is any point in the video where you thought uh, maybe my explanation wasn't good enough, or maybe you were, you just didn't understand something that happens, leave a comment in the comments down below, and I will do my best to answer you. So yeah, that's that's pretty much it. Really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I see you guys next time. Yeah.